So once again, our gospel comes from the Last Supper. And in today's section of uh, the Last Supper discourse, our Lord is giving words of consolation to the apostles. He is preparing them for his passion and for his death, um, also his ascension into heaven. And so he says to them all of these tender words. He says, I have told you these things in figures of speech, but the hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but I will tell you clearly about the Father. So he's referring to those 40 days after his resurrection. Spiritually speaking, those 40 days are considered the time of illumination, okay? And the time of enlightenment of the apostles. As our Lord says, he's not going to talk in figures of speech. But after his resurrection, when he is giving them um, great clarity of instruction, he is going to speak to them plainly and openly about the Father. And in fact, he says, in that day, ask the Father for your needs in my name, and that he, Christ, will not ask the Father for you. Why? Because the Father himself loves you. Because you have loved me and have come to believe that I came from God. And so all of this is meant to console and strengthen the apostles. So this is a new instruction that our Lord is giving to them. When he says, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Jesus is saying that God the Father will give the apostles whatever they ask in his name. Our Lord is speaking primarily to the apostles, but he's also speaking to every faithful soul of every generation, and the apostles were simply our representatives at that moment. Therefore, we need to learn to ask and receive because our Father in heaven will readily, lovingly, and fully hear and grant our petitions. The Father loves us because we love Christ and have believed in Christ. The Father is within us, in every soul that is in the state of grace. The Father is present not merely by his essence and power, but also by his friendship and paternity. For the soul in grace is the Father's abode and temple, in which he desires to be praised, worshipped, and invoked. Therefore, invoke him as one most familiarly and intimately present, and he will hear you. We should ask with great hope and love as sons asking a father, because he loves us supremely and with fatherly affection. Jesus says, we will obtain whatever we ask, that is, anything that is good for us and for the glory of God. Though we may ask God for temporal and transitory things such as health, wealth, a certain employment, etc., nevertheless, we must ask them for a good purpose, so that by them we might please God the more and perform more good works. So what is that exactly does it mean to ask in Christ's name? The genuine meaning is given to us by St. John Chrysostom and others as well. And they say to ask in the name of Christ is to ask through Christ and through Christ's merits, his dignity and his authority. For Christ by his passion and death merited that we should obtain from God whatever we ask in his name. His name signifies, in scriptural talk, his strength, his virtue, his merits, his grace, his dignity, and his authority. Therefore, to ask in the name of Christ is to ask while counting on his merits and to trust in them and not on our own. 
that God may look not on our own unworthiness or our own sins, but upon the face of his anointed, and on account of his sanctity and merits, grant us that which, per se, we don't deserve. For Christ merited that the Father should hear our prayers. And this is uh, precisely the church's understanding. And for this reason, we finish all of our prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, etc., etc. Another understanding of in the name of Jesus comes from St. Gregory. And he says, Jesus is the name of the Son. Jesus means Savior and also saving. Therefore, a person asks in the name of the Savior when he asks that which pertains to salvation. Because if something is asked which is not expedient or conducive to salvation, it is not asked of the Father in Christ's name. In fact, we have an example of this in Scripture when St. Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he prayed to be delivered from the thorn in the flesh. And in fact, he prayed three times, but his prayer was not answered in the way that he wanted. Why? Because it was more profitable to him, more profitable for his salvation, that he be humbled by that thorn in the flesh, and that he would continually struggle with it and overcome it with the grace of Christ. So Paul heard these words, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. We should think about that the next time it seems as though our similar petitions are not heard or answered. Consider also the example of the holy abbot that we celebrate today, St. Spes. His entry in the Roman Martyrology says, In the 6th century in Norcia, Italy, St. Spes the Abbot, who for 40 years tolerated blindness with marvelous patience. He was blind for 40 years in his monastery. Do you think he ever prayed to be healed of his blindness? Probably. But he wasn't heard. Precisely because it was through his blindness that he was sanctified. So we need to consider well our petitions to seek whether we ask in the name of Jesus, that is, if we're asking for things that will lead us to eternal salvation. St. James, in his letter, tells us another reason why our prayers may not be answered. He says, quote, You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. That's James chapter 4, verse 3. The, aff the affirmative promises of Scripture, such as this one, when our Lord says, He will give it to you, always require certain conditions. And Scripture then explains what those conditions are in other places. And so Scripture explains the conditions for which a prayer is going to be heard and answered um, by, number one, humility and reverence. And therefore, whoever prays um, with pride and with presumption, like the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, does not obtain his request. Number two, it requires contrition for sin, so that he who prays may be or may heartily wish to become a friend of God. Sinners, therefore, willingly persisting in mortal sin, are not heard by God. Do you want God to hear you? then first hear him and observe his law. First obey his will, and then God will do your will and fulfill your desires. This is the meaning of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. I will not hear, for your hands are full of blood. Number three, it requires great faith and hope or confidence that we shall obtain what we ask for through the merits of Christ. Many people don't have this confidence and therefore they do not obtain. St. James says again in his letter, chapter 1, verse 6, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Let's not waver in our faith. Number four, it requires perseverance, as is evident from Luke chapter 11, verses 7 through 8. The friend who arrives at midnight, knocking on the door, asking for bread, he is heard. Why? Because of his persistence. St. Augustine also says that some things are not denied by God in our prayers, but simply deferred to a later time. 
in order to be given to us at a time in which it is more fitting, more appropriate. Finally, when sometimes we are not heard when we pray for other people, for example, if we're praying for the conversion of a family member or something like that, it is either our own fault, because we're not fulfilling those other conditions that I just mentioned, or it's the fault of the person for whom we pray, either because of their sloth or evil disposition, which in and of itself makes them unworthy of God's grace. An instance of this is given in the example of the lives of the fathers. A certain man, tempted with the spirit of lust, asked for the prayers of a holy anchorite that he might obtain deliverance. He prayed again and again, but to no avail. When he wondered at this, God replied, quote, The man who is tempted does not deserve to be heard, because by lazily cherishing obscene thoughts and trifling with them, he is the cause of his own temptation. End quote. The anchorite told this to the man, and then, moved with compunction, the man gave himself to prayer, watching and fasting, as the anchorite advised him, and obtained deliverance from his temptation. Those who are tempted should therefore cooperate with those who are praying for them, in order that they may be heard, just as the sick man should cooperate with his physician in order to be cured. But if he refuses to do so, all the labor and diligence of the physician is useless. May we approach our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus for all of our needs with humility, confidence, and perseverance. St. Spes the Abbot, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.